Hey everyone, welcome back. The other day I got a comment on my YouTube video, the one about learning the WPF data grid. The comment said, what about changing the background of the header based on the is read only property of the cell? Now there's a couple ways I could interpret this. It could be based upon the is read only of the selected cells. It seems a little odd to do it just based upon if there's a cell in the column that's read only, but perhaps you've got a data trigger on your cell style or similar, and you're looking to change it uh, based on that. I figured I would do it based on selected cell, and I think some of the techniques could probably be easily adapted if the original poster was looking for uh, just any cell in the column. But let's jump over there and take a look. So here is my very simplistic application. You can see there's a couple columns. I can go through and I can select individual cells. As you see, whenever I select one of these cells in the age column, I have set the is read only for all of these to be true. Now, obviously, this could be expanded if you wanted to be more dynamic, but I think this is good enough to at least show the, the basic concept. As you can see, as you uh, select and move on and off, as long as there's any cell in this age column that is selected, the background color is changing. Take a look at how we did that. First of all, we'll start with the view model. I've got a person class. It's nothing special, just a name and an age. I've got a view model for my window. It's just a copy and paste of the same person object over and over and over. Not real exciting. Let's look at the XAML. Uh, here we've got a data grid, and it is bound to that person's collection that we just saw. Obviously turned off auto generate of columns because we didn't want that. And then the selection unit here is going to be set to cell. Again, just so that we could individually pick on those cells one at a time. And then gave it a name. And in this case, we're actually going to leverage the code behind with the selected cells changed event to be able to do some of the manipulation that we need to do. Some people get a little twitchy about the code behind. It's OK to use it, especially if you're talking about implementing something for your view. Go on. It's fine. Um, there is this cell. Uh, column header style that is actually changing the background color. Uh, but before we look too closely at it, let's actually look at the code behind and see how we get there. The property that you saw it bound to up above is an attached property on this data grid EX class. Effectively, I needed some bit of data to indicate should the background header or the background color of the header be changing. And so I created one called is cell read only. Not a great name, but it'll do for now. And it's nothing fancy. It's your standard attached property. Down here, we take a look at the data grid uh, selected cells changed event. This is the one that we registered for. And we're simply going to iterate through all of the selected cells whenever this, is, uh, this event is raised. There's a small interesting bit here. For each of the selected cells, we need to actually get the is read only property of the data grid cell. And there's sort of some deeply nested property pattern matching. So for those people who haven't seen this before, how you should end up reading this is these outer curly braces, these ones here outside of the if or outside of the is, indicate that the return from get cell content has to be non-null. It then says if the return is non-null, check the parent property and ensure that it's a data grid cell instance. And on that data grid cell instance, ensure that is read only is true. If any of that is false, otherwise the entire expression would return false. Functionally, it's equivalent to doing all of this logic down here. Great. If you need to pause and kind of work through it, sometimes this new pattern matching syntax throws people for a loop. It's really powerful. Occasionally difficult to read. But we simply build up a hash set of all of the columns that, can t that are selected that contain a read only cell. We then iterate through all of the columns and we set that attached property on the column itself based upon whether the column is in this hash set that we've defined. So did we find that column that has a selected cell and the cells is read only property is true. That's how we get the attached property toggle to either true or false. We go back to our XAML, we can take a look at this uh, data grid column header here. So if what you're looking to do is change the background of the column header, this is probably the style that you're going for. And you can see here on this data grid text column, this header style is what I'm applying. Uh, and more importantly, I'm also basing upon the uh, default style for data grid column header. This ensures that I don't lose my material design in XAML styling. And then this is where the, the binding gets a little funky. 
In WPF, to bind to attached properties, you end up putting parentheses around the attached property that you're looking for. It probably would shock nobody to see column dot property name, but in this case, because the column itself doesn't actually have the is cell read only, that property is owned by the uh, attached property data grid EX class. We end up referencing it with parentheses to say, okay, let's go through and look at this. And you can see that the source of this binding isn't going to be the data context of the header, because in this case, that would end up being the string of the property, either uh, name or age. And so instead, we say, let's go ahead and bind to ourselves the data grid column header object itself, which has a column property. And on that column property, we can then read the attached property that was set. If it's true, we'll go ahead and flip our background color to light coral. Otherwise, it just remains as its default. And you can see the result of doing this something like that. So hopefully you found this interesting. As always, happy coding. See everyone next time.